Welcome to the Nomadic Spaces podcast, where we talk all things interior design, tiny houses, and happy homes. Each week, we explore different interior design strategies, the unique challenges of small spaces, and accessible design solutions to help you create a more beautiful and happier home. Whether you're a fellow tiny house dweller or simply have an interest in interior design, this show has something for you. Hi folks, your host Sarah here. I am a professional interior designer and I run my own business, Zuka Interior Design, where I transform spaces all over the country. I'm also a realtor here in Asheville, North Carolina, where I live with my pup Elvis in a vintage travel trailer that I renovated into my tiny dream home. Thank you so much for being here. If you like what you hear, please consider leaving a review, hitting some stars, subscribing, and sharing this show. It's how little shows like this survive. All right, let's get into today's episode. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Nomadic Spaces podcast. Today's episode is called How Much to Invest in an Interior Design Airbnb Project. Investing in the interior design of an Airbnb property is a strategic move that can significantly enhance its appeal, occupancy rates, and ultimately, your rental income. However, determining how much to invest can be very challenging. Today, I'm going to guide you through some key considerations and provide practical tips to help you decide the right amount to invest into your Airbnb interior design project. First, let's get an understanding of the importance of interior design in a short-term rental or Airbnb. First impressions matter, and the first impression your Airbnb makes on potential guests is crucial. So high-quality photos of a beautifully designed space will capture the attention and lead to bookings. A well-designed interior can set your property apart from the competition, making it more appealing and memorable. Enhancing guest experience. Interior design directly impacts the guest experience. A thoughtfully designed space can make guests feel more comfortable, relaxed, and pampered. Positive experience often lead to glowing reviews, repeat bookings, and word-of-mouth referrals, which are invaluable for your business. Increasing occupancy rates and revenue. A stylish and functional design can justify higher nightly rates, leading to an increased revenue. Higher occupancy rates and positive reviews can also improve your property's ranking on Airbnb, which will make it more visible to potential guests. Now let's talk a bit about assessing your budget. First, we wanna define your financial parameters. So before starting your interior design project, it's essential to define your financial parameters. How much can you afford to invest without jeopardizing your financial stability? Consider your savings, monthly income, and other financial obligations. Next is analyzing the property's potential. Evaluate the potential return on investment, otherwise known as ROI, for your Airbnb or vacation rental property. Research the local market to understand average occupancy rates, nightly rates, and competition. Properties in high demand areas with good amenities can typically justify a higher investment in the interior design. Next, we wanna determine the scope of the project. The scope of the project will significantly influence your budget. Are you furnishing a new property from scratch or are you updating an existing one where we're keeping some of the furniture. Does the property need renovations or contract work like painting? Clearly define the areas you want to focus on, such as the living room, bedrooms, kitchens, or bathrooms, and prioritize based on their impact on the guest experience. Now I'm going to share some key cost components in Airbnb design for you to consider. First is furniture and decor. Furniture and decor are essential components of your interior design project. The cost can vary widely depending on your tastes and the quality of items you choose. For instance, furnishing a living room can range from a few thousand dollars for budget-friendly options to tens of thousands for high-end pieces. It is crucial to balance quality and cost, investing in key pieces that will last while perhaps opting for more affordable accessories. Another key cost component is professional fees. Hiring a professional interior designer can add significant value to your project and make sure that you are getting a return on every dollar you spend. Designers can help create a cohesive look, choose quality pieces, and avoid costly mistakes. Interior designers can charge by the hour, a flat fee, or a percentage of total project costs. On average, you might expect to spend between $100 and $300 per hour depending on the designer's experience, services, involvement, and location. Some designers, like myself, may also offer a flat project fee that ranges depending on the project's complexity and scope, which usually lowers the total costs as compared to an hourly rate. Pro tip, be sure to ask your designer about markups and trade pricing. 
I pass all my discounts to my clients, but many designers work within a traditional interior design business model where they get a percent of each product cost. Hi friends, I hope you are enjoying this show. Listening to podcasts and reading blogs like this is a great way to gain knowledge, but to really make change, you need to take action. Luckily, taking action doesn't have to be overwhelming, timely, or expensive. My desk refresh guide is a great resource you can download totally free from the link in the show notes. This guide will break down the redesign process into simple, actionable steps with tangible results to transform your space without spending a cent. Now let's get back to the episode. Another important component to consider is renovations and upgrades. If your project involves renovations, or upgrades such as new flooring or cabinetry or structural changes, these costs can quickly add up. It is crucial to get detailed quotes from contractors and factor these into your overall budget. Renovations typically account for a significant portion of the budget, so if this is in the stars, plan accordingly. Materials and finishes. The choice of materials and finishes also impacts the overall cost. High-end materials like marble countertops, hardwood floors, or custom cabinetry do come at a premium. However, there are often more affordable alternatives that can offer a similar look and feel. So consider your priorities and decide where it makes sense to splurge and where you can save. Miscellaneous costs. Don't forget to account for miscellaneous costs, such as receiving deliveries or furniture assembly, installation, lighting, window treatments, rugs, accessories. These items, while often overlooked, are crucial in tying the room together and can add up, so make sure we account for them early on. So to establish a realistic budget, I have two tips. One is break down the budget. Breaking down your budget into categories can help you manage costs more effectively. For example, you might allocate 30% of your budget furniture, 20% to professional fees, 25% to renovations and upgrades, 15% to materials and finishes, and maybe 10% to miscellaneous costs. Again, this is just an example. The budget breakdown is going to vary significantly depending on your specific project and property, but it serves as a helpful working guide to just look at throughout the project. The next tip is to plan for contingencies. It is wise to set aside a contingency fund, usually around 10 to 15% of the total budget. Unexpected expenses are almost inevitable, especially in renovation projects. Whether it's hidden issues that are undercovered during the renovation or a piece of furniture that ends up costing more than what anticipated, having a contingency fund just ensures that you're prepared for these surprises and it won't derail your entire project. Now I'm gonna share a few tips about getting the most value from your investment. First, prioritize key areas. Focus your investment on the areas that are gonna have the most significant guest impact. For example, the kitchen and the living room are typically the most used spaces in a rental home and can greatly influence the overall aesthetic and functionality. Investing in these areas can provide the highest return both in terms of rental rates, but also for potential resale value. Next, balance quality and cost. While it's tempting to go for ultra cheap, low end everything, that is really not a good long-term strategy for a vacation rental property. Balancing quality and cost is essential. Invest in high quality, durable items for pieces that will be the most used and reviewed, such as sofas, dining tables, and beds. For decorative items and accessories, you can consider more budget-friendly options. This approach allows you to create a luxurious look without overspending on everything. Next is DIY versus professional help. Decide which aspects of the project you can handle yourself and which require professional help. DIY can save you money, but it's really important to be realistic about your skills and the time you can commit. For complex tasks like electrical work, plumbing, or major renovations, it's really best to just hire professionals to ensure the job is done safely and correctly. Also, if you are working with a very tight timeline to get the unit up and running, you might wanna consider a professional who can get it done quick. Lastly, shop smart. Take advantage of sales, discounts, and secondhand options. Many high quality pieces can be found at a fraction of the cost if you know where to look. Estate sales, thrift stores, and online marketplaces like eBay and Craigslist can be real treasure troves for unique and affordable decor. Here are a few really important tips to maximize your investment. One, create a cohesive look. A cohesive and well thought out design is crucial for creating a memorable guest experience. That does not mean everything should be uniform or matchy-matchy. We want each space to have its own character, while all of the spaces still feel connected and make sense as a whole. You can maybe choose a theme or a style that complements the property's location and target market. For example, a beachfront property might feature a coastal theme, while a city apartment could have a more urban, modern feel. Next, focus on functionality. Ensure that the space is functional and meets the needs of your guests. Provide ample seating, storage, and workspaces. Consider the flow of the space and make sure it's easy to navigate. Functional design not only enhances guest experience, but also reduces the wear and tear on the property. 
Next, add unique touches. Personal touches and unique decor elements can make your property stand out. Consider adding local art, handmade crafts, or maybe custom furniture pieces. Maybe it's a hanging egg chair on the front deck looking over the expansive view. These types of touches can create a memorable experience and encourage guests to leave positive reviews. Perhaps the most important tip of this entire episode, invest in quality photos. High quality photos are essential for showcasing your property on Airbnb or other vacation rental sites. Once the interior design is complete, hire a professional photographer to capture the space. Please don't use your iPhone. Not only do good photos significantly increase your property's appeal and booking rates, bad photos of even the most beautifully designed space can really tank the overall success of the property. So to wrap up, here are my final thoughts. Investing in an Airbnb or vacation rental design project is a significant financial commitment, but it's also an investment in your property's success. By carefully assessing finances, setting clear goals, planning the budget, it wisely, you can create a beautiful functional space that attracts guests and generates higher revenue. Remember that flexibility is key. Be prepared to adjust your budget as needed and always keep an eye on your overall financial health. With thoughtful planning and smart spending, your Airbnb interior design project can be both a rewarding and profitable venture. As always, thank you so much for listening. If you are interested in overhauling an Airbnb, buying a new Airbnb, or have any questions about the vacation rental market in general, I would love to chat with you. So please feel free to reach out. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Until next week, home happy. I hope today's episode was helpful and inspiring. My goal with this show is to help others make change that transforms their space and achieve their design goals. But just absorbing content, even brilliant content like this, doesn't get results. Taking action does. If you're still listening, you might be ready to fully accomplish your design goals. My challenge to you is to commit to taking one action right now before you don't. Taking action might look like booking a design project jumpstart, or maybe it's downloading the desk refresh guide, or just signing up for my mailing list. Maybe it's scheduling a complimentary connection call with me to talk more about your design goals in detail. You can find out more about all of these fun things I just mentioned and contact me directly through my website, which is sukainteriordesign.com. That is S-U-K-K-H-A-I-N-T-E-R-I-O-R-D-E-S-I-G-N.com. I love to connect, so please don't be a stranger. As always, thanks for being here and being a part of this community. If you liked what you heard, please take a second to review, subscribe, and share with your friends and family. It's truly the easiest way to support me and this podcast. Until next week, take care and home happy.